Hello friends, I am Larry Hutton, your host of Limitless Life, and I'm so glad you joined me again today. Many of you join us on a regular basis. If this is your first time, I know you'll go away blessed. You'll go away happy that you joined us because we're always sharing about the good things that God has for us. We're not talking religion now, so put that aside. Uh, Christianity is not a religion, it's a relationship. Religions of the world all serve dead gods. We serve a living Jesus. He is real. He is alive. I mean, He's appeared to many people. Even after He rose from the dead, He appeared to many. He has throughout. In fact, uh, I've been talking to some uh, friends uh, that go over into some of the Middle Eastern countries where Christianity is not allowed. And uh, Jesus has been actually appearing to different people over there, and they've been accepting him as their Lord and Savior. And you know, you f get you get found out, man, they'll kill you. But uh, I'm telling you, we we serve a, a wonderful Jesus, and He is alive and well, and He has a lot of good things for us in this life. And that's that's my that's my passion. I've been preaching since 1980, really, in the ministry, part-time ministry, even back in the late 70s for four years. I traveled with a, a group called Peace, a singing group, and we'd always preach and teach from the platform. So I, I've been preaching even longer, but uh, I started, I preached my very first pulpit sermon uh, as a preacher in 1980. But uh, ever since then, I've just had a passion to let people know God is good. There is a God of this world called Satan, the devil. We'll be doing a series here soon to uh, shed the light on what he does and how he works so people can uh, stop him from working their lives. But our God is a good God. James says there's uh, only good and perfect that comes down from him. He's called the Father of Lights. The reason he's called the Father of Lights, first of all, he said, you are the light of the world. So he, when Jesus was on the earth, he was the light of the world. But now he says, you're lights because we're born of him. So he is the Father of Lights. Our Father, you and I are called lights. Let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So we're called lights and God wants you and I shining. But, but only good and perfect comes down from our Father, the Father of Lights. Uh, with whom, the Bible said, there's no varying or even like a shadow, even a hint of turning. So in other words, if it's not good or not perfect, it's not from God. If it's bad, if it's evil, if it's imperfect, it's not from God. So sickness and disease is not from God. Physical injury and pain is not from God. Uh, it's not God trying to do it. It's not God even allowing it. Obviously, because God made us human beings with free wills, He allows us to do whatever we want. You know, that's one thing I do dislike about people that try and preach on the sovereignty of God and they try and preach, well, you know, God had a purpose in that disease He put on you. This was what I was told because I, I had an incurable disease in my body the first 22 years of my life. And, and oh, gosh, it irks me when I hear people do this. They teach on the sovereignty of God and said, well, God... God may not have done it. He may not have put it on you, but He allowed it for a purpose. In His sovereignty, He wanted it, so He allowed it. He didn't do it, but He allowed it. No, no. Here's what you need to understand. <laughs> and people don't understand this when they preach it. Uh, because God made us free will beings, He will allow us to make choices. Remember in Deuteronomy 30, 19, I call heaven and earth to record this day against you. I've set before you life and death, blessing, cursing, therefore choose life. He didn't make us. He didn't make us do anything. So we can make choices. So in other words, I could get up and walk outside right now and walk out into the middle of the highway and let a Mack truck run me over and kill me. You know what some people would say? Well, you know, God just must have had a purpose. No, Larry was stupid. <laughs> Larry did not do the will of God. Larry knew better, but he went ahead as an act of his own will. It wasn't God allowed. Oh, yeah, God allowed me to do it only in the fact that I'm, I can do what I want and God will allow me to do it. But see, see that false teaching, folks? There's so much wrong about that, and that messes people up. Only good and perfect comes down from the Father of lights. He doesn't vary from that or have a hint of shadow of turning. So if it's not good, if it's not perfect, it's not from our God. Hallelujah. Poverty and lack is not from our God. He allows it only because we do. But if we stop it, whatever we bind on earth, God backs us up in heaven. Whatever we loose or permit or allow on earth, God backs us up in heaven. 
So in other words, there's a whole lot more to our lives, choices we make that have to do with God's will operating or not operating in our lives. We need to understand that. And, and we need to understand that uh, with this subject that we're dealing with. Last program, we started talking about the subject of Jesus living through us. Jesus wants to live his life through us. If any man be in Christ, you're a new creature, old things passed away, behold, all become new. Now you're supposed to live as he lived. 1 John 2, 6, walk even as he walked. So you and I are supposed to live our lives the way Jesus did. And so it's important to understand the things about the Father because Jesus said, I and the Father are one. So... However Jesus lived, it's the way God lives. It's the life of God. And remember when Jesus prayed the, what we call the Lord's Prayer, Thy will be done where? On where? On earth. That's where you and I are right now, on earth, even as it is where? In heaven. So in heaven, there is no sickness and disease. There is no poverty and lack. There is no fear. There are no panic attacks. There is no depression. There is no discouragement. There is no bad temper and, and unrighteous anger. Now, we know God is uh, angry at unrighteousness, right? But um, at, at the devil, he, he, he whew, yeah, righteous indignation, right? Uh, but but uh, an anger, bad temper and anger problems like on the earth, there's none of that in heaven. Um, guilt and shame, worry, stress. There's none of that in heaven. So we're supposed to be letting Jesus live his life through us. And that's why we're spending these few programs, however many it goes, uh, on living, letting Jesus live through us. Jesus living through us. All right. Uh, our text that we use last program is Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. Uh, it is no longer I who live. But Christ lives in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. I want to just read the message translation again, because we saw it last time, but it's so good. Uh, Christ, this is, I've been crucified with Christ, verse here in Galatians 2.20. The message says, Christ's life showed me how to live and enabled me to do it. To do what? Live the way Jesus did. Uh, I identified myself completely with him, with Jesus. Indeed, I have been crucified with Christ, with Jesus. My ego is no longer central. It is no longer important that I appear righteous before you or have your good opinion. <laughs> I like that. And I'm no longer driven to impress God. Why? Christ lives in me. The life you see me living is not mine but it is lived by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Man, this is Christ's life showed me how to live like him and then enabled me to live like him. And so I identify completely with him. I've been crucified with Christ. My ego is no longer central, no more ego. It's, it's no longer important that I, appear, that I appear righteous before you and get your good opinion. And I'm not trying to impress God either. <laughs> Why? Because uh, Christ lives in me. The life you see me live is not mine. In other words, I am dead. In fact, that's the verse we lived, uh, ended on in Col Colossians 3.3. I'm dead. My life is hid with Christ in God. And this is the kind of life that is the blessed life. You want to be happy all the time. I'm talking 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. You want to enjoy your life. That's what I do, friends. I, I, I preach what I live and I live what I preach. So I'm not putting on. You can ask, you can ask my wife who's been uh, with me, been married since 1981 known each other a little bit longer than that. Uh, you can ask my TV manager, uh, David Wergenis, get a hold of him. He's known me since the early 80s, 1983. You can ask people that have been around me and know me. I, I live what I preach, preach what I live. They don't hear me preach something on the TV or preach something at a church service or something like that. And then when they see me out bowling or playing golf or at the grocery store or at Walmart, they don't see me talking differently or acting differently. 
You just won't because I'm a happy camper. <laughs> I'm a happy person. I'm a joyous person. I'm a peaceful. You know why? Because I'm dead. <laughs> My life is hid with Christ in God. So I'm, I'm attempting and I by no means arrive. But I'm just telling you how I live right now. And it's going to get better and better. But I'm telling you, uh, my life is living. I'm, I'm letting Jesus live through me. So I'm continually listening to the word of God, renewing my mind, thinking about Jesus. And so it's just the way I think. It's the way I live. People have a hard time understanding. For a long time, my wife had a hard time understanding how 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 come, you know, you just don't share all these bad things that always go on happening to you. And, you know, why don't you share all the tests and trials and hardships you're going through? And I say, because, you know, when they come, um, I walk through them in faith. I'm not denying them, but I don't talk about the negative and junk that the devil brings my way. I uplift Jesus. In him I live and move and have my being. And so when I, even when depression comes, it only remains for a moment or so. When discouragement comes, I only let it stay for a moment or so. When, when I feel bad temper or anger problems, I only let them stay for a moment or so. In other words, I choose life and so then it's gone. So the only thing that I could share with my wife, if I'm going to share uh, my negative emotions, I'd have to share, honey, uh, for two seconds today, I thought about being depressed. <laughs> um, for 20 seconds today, you know, I was getting really mad at something you did uh, for because <laughs> I just won't let those feelings stay because I found out they're redeemed. So if I'm letting G listen, if I'm dead, then it's not me living. So why should I let the dead part of me live? And that's all you're doing when you allow your emotions to control you through people's feelings and other people's actions and your hormones and all that. If you're allowing that, you're not dead. And that's why we're talking about dying to self to get more into it this program. But listen, you are dead. Listen, if you're dead, just, just pretend for a minute. Humor me for a minute. Just pretend you laid down on the floor and you died. Now, pretend your wife or your husband walks up to you and starts saying something that could really hurt your feelings. You'd say, Brother Larry, it wouldn't hurt my feelings. I'm dead. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What if, what if the hormones in the body, now you died, but the body's still trying to make it, you know, and the hormones are going haywire and the chemicals in the body are going haywire trying not to die. You know, the body actually continues to try and do stuff even after you physically die. So let's just say the hormones are acting crazy and the chemicals in your body acting crazy. Would, would your emotions and and would you just, you know, go off on something? No, you'd say, Brother Larry, I'm dead. I couldn't know. Exactly. You're dead. And that's why if we will learn to die to self, we're going to talk about that more today. If we'll learn to die, be dead, man, you'd be happy. And we're not talking about dying physically. We're talking about dying to self, dying to our own ambitions, dying to the I got to have it my way. If it's not my way, it's the highway, bro. <laughs> no, no, we're, we're dead. This Colossians 3, verse 3, you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. The Message Bible. Your old life is, is dead. Your new life, which is your real life, even though invisible to spectators, is with Christ in God. He is your life. So that's the message Bible of this Colossians 3.3. We are dead. You ought to just say that to yourself. Man, I'm a dead man. I'm a dead woman, <laughs> whether you're male or female. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead to self. I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm just going to start when, when something um, offends me, I'm just going to all of a sudden play, play possum. <laughs> Remember, I grew up in the South. Of course, I see possums in other states to not just the South, but, but in the South, we, in Florida especially, we had lots of possums. And it was so funny. I remember one time I was uh, coming up and a car had just passed and I didn't see it pass the possum, but the possum just about got hit. And all of a sudden it was on its side 
and looked like it had been hit. It looked like it was dead because it wasn't moving, just laying there. I had my headlights on it because the other car kept going, you know. So here it is right in front of my, on, in the road, laying on its side, not moving. I mean, I thought for sure, well, that car that was just past it just hit it, man. Must have run over it. So I got out. I, I went out in front of the car and, and was looking at it. And man, I, I didn't see any blood. And, and I thought, man, it sure doesn't look dead. And so I just barely tapped it with my foot. And all of a sudden it got up and took off running. It was playing possum, <laughs> playing dead. That's what you and I need to do. You need when, when something offensive is done to you, just play possum. <laughs> Maybe we need to just start this in the body of Christ. Play possum. Go, go to your wife or have, get a hold of this revelation. Start saying to each other, if one does it, play possum. Play possum. Instead of getting mad when they say play possum, you're dead. So play possum. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're talking about dying to self. All right. Now, before I, before I go any further on this dying to self issue, I do want to cover uh, uh, something that Paul said. He made a statement about dying daily. And I've heard a lot of people take that and preach to others, you need to die daily. And they'll quote the verse that the Apostle Paul said in Corinthians. But actually, Paul is not talking about dying daily to self ambitions and self desires and dying daily like we're talking about on this program right now. He wasn't talking about that at all. So I just don't like it when me or any other preacher or any other Christian where we take verses out of context and try and make a doctrine out of it. You need to die daily, bro. You need to die daily, sister. And that's what they do here in 1 Corinthians. So let's go over to 1 Corinthians 15. I just want you to see this. Uh, so you can understand verses of Scripture that don't apply to what we're talking about, and then we'll look at ones that do. This particular one does not apply to dying to self daily. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 31, Paul said, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. Well, there it is, Brother Larry. There it is. He said he died daily, so why can't we use this to preach we need to die daily to self? No, because the statement has been taken out of context. If you actually read, I'll just pick out a few verses in this passage right here, starting in verse 12. Now, if Christ is preached that he has been raised from the dead, how do some among you say that there's no resurrection of the dead? Because if there's no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is not risen, verse 13. Verse 14, and if Christ is not risen, then our preaching is empty and your faith is empty. Look at verse 16. If the dead do not rise, then Christ is not risen. Verse 17, and if Christ is not risen, your faith is futile and you're still in your sins. Verse 18, then also those that have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. <laughs> They're not going to rise again. And, and if in this life, look at verse 19, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we're of all men the most pitiful. King James says miserable. Now look at verse 29. Otherwise, what will we do when uh, those who are baptized for the dead? You know, somebody gets born again and they go get baptized in a lake or river or something. What will they do who are baptized the dead if the dead don't rise? In other words, if there's no resurrection, why are they baptized then? <laughs> Verse 30, and why do we stand? Look what Paul said. Here's the, here's the context. And why do we stand in jeopardy every, in other words, if there's no resurrection? Why do we stand in jeopardy every hour? And, and Paul in 15, 1 Corinthians 15, 30 is letting us know about all the other verses we've looked at many times. You've probably read before where people stoned him. People whipped him many, many times trying to kill him. I mean, all the things that came against him on a daily basis trying to kill his body and get him out of here so he couldn't preach Jesus. He said in the next verse then, verse 31, our verse, I affirm by the boasting in you, which I have in Christ Jesus, our Lord, I die daily. So in context, Paul is talking about the resurrection of the dead and how there was false teaching 
that there was not going to be any resurrection of the dead for those in Christ. He, and Paul was strongly disagreeing with that false doctrine and said that he faced death every single day, but that he was not doing it in vain, which would have been the case if there was no resurrection. So, so when he said, I die daily, listen, listen to the, the message translation. Message says, I look death in the face practically every day I live. Do you think I'll do this if I wasn't convinced of your resurrection and my resurrection as being guaranteed by the resurrected Messiah, Jesus? Now you can see what he's saying, see? So Paul was not talking about dying to self. He was talking about physically dying. So you cannot use this verse to preach about dying daily. Now, do we need to put ourselves under? Absolutely. All the time, on a regular basis. And, I'll, and we'll see verses here where we need to do that. All the time, we need to put our flesh under. Because see, the flesh is enmity. Remember the Spirit, the Spirit of God said uh, in Romans, the flesh is an enemy against us. Our flesh, that fleshly nature and desire. You know, we have a, a, a new nature on the inside. We don't have the sin nature anymore. We're not sinners. That's why do not, if you're a Christian, do not ever say, well, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. No, you're not an old sinner. Before you got saved by his grace, you were an old sinner. But once his grace saved you, that means he washed you in the blood of Jesus and made you pure and whiter than snow and wiped away your sins as far as the east is from the west. <laughs> Friends, you're no longer a sinner. You're now a saint. You're now holy. God says you are holy. So be holy even as I am holy, God says. Yeah, you're righteous. <laughs> wow. So you're no longer a sinner. Oh, I'm just an old sinner. Say, but God. no, you're not. You're, you're righteous. You're a child of God. You're the most, uh, you're born again. You're in Christ. All things, old things are passed away. Behold, all has become new. So, man, we're talking about dying to self. So you need to get rid of those selfish thoughts too. And those die, oh, because that's false humility. I'm just an old sinner. Say, but that's just false humility. That's not really, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God. He'll exalt you. Humble yourself. Go ahead and believe what God said. And let Jesus live through you. Die to self. Wow. So let's talk about dying to self. Let's um, at least start. I'll start here. I'm going to have to pick up next program. But let's talk about what it means to die to self. Uh, look at Luke 9, chapter 23, because this is where Jesus taught about uh, you know, taking up our cross and, and walking with Jesus and, and suffering for Jesus, uh, not suffering sickness and disease and poverty and lack and fear and depression, all those things. We're redeemed from those things, but suffering the godly in Christ Jesus, the Bible says, will suffer persecution. So we're going to suffer persecution. We'll look at that more as we go. But in Luke 9, 23, look what Jesus said. We got about three minutes here. Uh, he said to them all, if, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. See, remember, I am dead. Play possum. <laughs> We're going to start using that phrase, play possum. I may come up next program for those of you that watch. I may start the next program, play possum. Of course, then if I start the program that way and somebody's watching it for the first time, what in the world? Man, I better, I better watch somebody else. This guy's nuts, you know? So, so, but maybe I'll bring it up during the program. Play possum, all right? All right, I'm dead. Uh, so Jesus said, if you want to come after me, in other words, you want to be my follower, you want to walk the way I walk, you want to do the things I do, speak the way I speak, walk with God the way I walk with God, hear from God the way I hear from God, you want to come after me? Then you got to deny yourself. You have to deny yourself and take up your cross, Luke says daily, and follow me. Hmm. And then verse 24, Jesus said, you're going to save your life. Wow. You're going to save your, you're going to save your life. Why? Because all of a sudden you're letting Jesus live through you. That's what we've titled this series, Jesus living through us. All right. Um, so Jesus said, you got to come after me. You got to 
okay, you got to follow Jesus. You got to deny yourself. Don't let your own ambitions and own selfish desires take over. And then you got to take up the cross. Play possum. <laughs> you'll, you'll see that as we get into this more. And then follow me. So you go through the scriptures and you find out what Jesus said and you follow that. You see what Jesus did and you follow that because he lived on the earth to show us how we're supposed to live. He was 100% human being. In fact, he wasn't anointed by God until he was 30 years old. That's when God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power. Then at 30 is when he started healing and doing miracles. But all the way to 30, he was a man, 100% human being, free from sin. Why? Born of his father's blood. That's the virgin birth. That's why he had the no sin nature, so he could live free from sin. So he was 100% human being. He lived the way he did to show you and I how you're sp we're supposed to live. Then he died the way he did to enable us to live the way he did. So the three and a half years of public ministries was to show us how he lived so you and I could live that way. And we can let Jesus' life live through us. And I'm telling you what, you are going to be happy when you do it. I'm telling you, I am happy and fulfilled and content and enjoying my life to the fullest because I'm letting Jesus live through me. All right, we're out of time. We'll pick up here next, next program. But I'm telling you, this is going to be good. This is going to help us all. We're going to all live better lives. Thank you for joining us and thank you partners for supporting the program. Man, what a blessing you are to help us financially so that we can reach you and others like you. I love you guys. I call you blessed. We'll see you next program. Have a Jesus-filled day. God intends for believers to be able to apply His Word to their daily lives and get good results, living the joyful, loving, and abundant life that Jesus has provided for us. Believers are supposed to understand the Bible and be able to enjoy the blessings of heaven while we are here on the earth. But many believers, at the beginning of their new life in Jesus, did not learn the most basic foundational truths of the Bible that will carry them over all of the traps and pitfalls and on into victorious, limitless life in Christ. In this new book, Dr. Hutton addresses all the issues that every Christian must come to know, understand, and establish as true in order to lead a limitless life in Jesus. To order your copy of Limitless Life with Jesus, go to larryhutton.org or call 888-887-WORD. Join us again for Limitless Life with Dr. Larry Hutton, where you'll get practical teaching from God's Word that you can apply to your everyday life. Go to LarryHutton.org to watch this program and many others. You'll find special offers and resources to help you thrive in life. You can check on Larry and Liz's schedule and join them at a meeting near you. That's LarryHutton.org, or you can call 888-887-WORD.